Hey, my name is Brett, and I am one week in to developing my first significant game project that is going to be a retro-inspired turn-based RPG. And right now it's called Lunar Legacy, but I think I'll figure out a different name. I wanted to share my progress so far. A couple of things worth noting is this character sprite is just stolen from Dragon Quest 1 on the Super Nintendo, as is a couple other pieces of art. So I toss those in to experiment and uh, make progress, and I'll definitely be replacing those with my own art. Um, okay, so as you can see, you have this player who you can move around the map. Input works with keyboard. It also works with a controller. I'm using an Xbox controller. And you can walk up to these squares, which are NPCs, and uh, talk to them. So this character, this NPC's character's name is May. And May says, hello, I'm May. Uh, that's some pixel art I made as an avatar, as an example. So it shows avatar. You can progress through the text. May says, I'm an NPC. That means non-player character. I have multiple lines of dialogue with a lot to say. And then that closes, and you can go back to walking around. I've got another NPC. I'm an NPC with no name. Not sure how I even made the cut. You can go up and down do uh, doors or um, stairs. They're called doors in the code, but they're stairs. To go to different levels and talk to an NPC. This is an example of a cutscene that this old man will load, where it loads into a different state, where I would like to display images and... Um, almost have like a visual novel type cutscene. I was a young lad, a spring chicken, and that was when I saw her, she was feeding the horses, and I stood there watching, unable to look away. That's just garbage text. Um, uh, weren't those the days? Prite, which is just the word sprite without the S, is, uh, Prite says, so I guess there are some monsters on the next floor. Would you be able to help us out and defeat them? Thanks. So let's go to the next floor and fight some monsters. So here we have Slime from Dragon Quest. If you uh, collide with a monster on the field, it be, goes into combat, pops up, it says a wild slime appears, and you have this combat menu where you can choose what to do. You can defend. L raises her shield and braces for attack. L is the temporary name for the main character. The slime attacks. We defend, so it only does one damage. If we attack, we do three damage to the slime. Slime attacks back for three damage because we didn't defend, so the slime does more damage. And you can see L's HP bar goes down. I would like to display L's avatar and make this combat scene more in depth. Also, that background behind this slime is also from Dragon Quest. So um, that's the main inspiration for the game. Uh, we'll attack again. Defeat the slime, a little jingle plays, and you gain experience. The experience doesn't do anything yet, but eventually it would lead to leveling up and that sort of thing. Um, and now you can see the slime has gone from the map. We can keep exploring the map, and there are other slimes, but I want to quick show off the pause menu. Since this game is a turn based RPG, a lot of it's menu driven with cursor input, where you move up and down generally, and then confirm, or you can go backwards. So. You can press B or start to close and open this pause menu. And then within the pause menu, there's a toggle full screen. That works, but that will screw up the recording, so I won't click it. Um, and you can go to system, and you can actually save the game. You can quit to desktop, you can return to title screen. So let's save, and then let's return to title screen, and I'll show loading the game. So it loads you back where you are. That slime we defeated earlier is still there. So like when you reload a level or a map, the enemies will respawn, but I don't want random encounters. So I thought that was a nice compromise. And uh, yeah, so that's save game. Uh, pretty simple. It doesn't save everything it needs to yet, but the basics are working. Also in combat, you can flee and then run away. I'd make it so, like soon I would like to make the map enemies troll around and follow a kind of path, and then chase the player if they see the player. And then what would happen is after you flee, they would kind of flash 
and be paused for a little bit so you can get away. Um, yeah, so that's the current progress of this. The plan for it is to, uh, I want to take this prototype a little bit farther. I have a couple things I need to figure out. Um, and I'll go into in depth into those kinds of things like map editing and making the art, how the NPC dialogue gets written and where that all lives in the future. Cause I'm still getting that all kind of settled down. And then once that gets solid and I feel good about the simplified systems, I want to actually produce a smaller, shorter, finished game, maybe like a couple of hours. I have a, the story outlined and the character, the locations, all that stuff is figured out. But I actually want to go into producing it, making the art, sound effects, music, coding it up, adding some more systems to this. But yeah, the basics are here, which I feel really, really good about. And I uh, would love to share my updates every so often, maybe once a month, every time I hit like a major, complete a major step in the project development. I'd love to share more. Um, some really quick info about the project is I'm using this library, somewhere between a library and an engine called Haxfixel. Haxfixel, Haxfixel is, uses the Hax programming language. So you can see here, like I'll open up the player class. It's kind of like C sharp, it's garbage collected and it's the framework does a lot for you. It's pretty solid and stable. It's been around for at least 10 years. So there's not like, it's not tumultuous. Projects have shipped with it. And the really nice thing for it is it's cross-platform. So I can build and compile it for Mac, Windows, Linux, HTML5 for the web, which is quite nice. That'd be an easy way to share the game with people without them having to download it. Also, you can build it for iOS and Android and console games have been built and shipped with it. So that's kind of cool. Lots of potential. I like that. And I like that I can work on it on my Mac and uh, test it on Windows, that kind of thing. So yeah, that's pretty much it so far. I don't want to really dive into the code in this update, but um, that could be something fun to do in the future. But that's my current progress for a week. I worked on smaller games before, little prototypes and demos, but nothing, I've never finished a significant project. So for me, I'm trying to embrace constraints and those constraints being 16 by 16 pixels. I'm using the JMP color palette, which is a 16 color palette for the art. And, um, yeah, having a really limited combat system where it's 1v1, not really having magic yet. So I want to tell this story, build this small game, get this sort of the pipeline of producing the game finished and working, release something, and then make the next project even a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, and keep upgrading. And I think by having ideas, writing them down, and saying that's for the next project, has helped me stay focused and hopefully I'll continue to make steady progress and uh, I'm looking forward to sharing it. So yeah, thanks for checking out episode one of making a 16-bit inspired turn-based RPG. All right, thanks and take care, bye.